Many thanks for keeping a date with us on your ultimate news and current affairs program on television this morning on ITV. A million apologies for the long break occasioned by some technical hitches. We thank you for your understanding. We thank you for your patience. Well, what is most important is the program is on, even, ha even though we have a limited time. And so we'll go straight into the conversations on the program today. We'll begin with um, the upsurge in social vices, what you could easily refer to as a scourge of social vices, beginning with rape. Recently, the federal government, through the Inspector General of Police, gave a report that over 700 rape cases have been reported in Nigeria. That's between January and May. And this seems to have coincided with the period of the lockdown. Within that period, the uh, activities of uh, security agents in terms of brutality also went up. All right? Some even compared the report or the results from that, um, those activities with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic in terms of casualty figures and all of that. So we'll look at all of these issues. And then on the flip side, we'll talk a bit of politics. But let me begin with our panelists here. I'd like to thank very specially uh, Patriot Patrick Osage Eholo is the president and founder, One Love Foundation, a frontline civil society activist, Petro Dusagi Helomin. Thanks for joining us on the program. It's a pleasure having me. Thank you for having me. We also have with us in the studio a lecturer and a public affairs commentator, uh, an economic analyst and political analyst, Dr. Stella Omonigo from the University of Benin. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you, Mr. Duke. Thank you for having me. Good morning, viewers at home. Okay, let me, let me start with uh, Petro Dusagi Iholo. I mean, you have been at the forefront, so to speak, in uh, engaging the issues of social vices, particularly at a time that there seems to be an increase in all of these vices. I I'm sure what's really brought the issue of rape to the front burner was the uh, murder and rape of uh, Waila, a hundred level uh, student of the University of Benin. But this issue has always been there. Uh, I, I, I want to get, I want to get uh, from you what, in your opinion, has brought us to where we are now. Let's let's take it off from there. Well, you know, thank you for having me and thank you, viewers. I think what has brought us here is a, a systematic uh, fellowship of our leaders. You know, uh, voila. Perhaps we don't end it. May I also rest in peace. Man. Uh, many years ago, I've been in your program, about 10 years ago to precise, I was after, especially the lecturers who, who want to uh, rape a student before they can get their grades. I'm mm -hmm. glad that the lecturer is here with us on this panel. You see, a woman has a right to say no. Rape is rape. Yeah. Rape should be condemned. Imagine you are a guy and somebody sodomizes you. How would you feel? It's terrible. And the, uh, the most painful aspect of it is that we have a government who talk about corruption. And the government is so corrupt because the police that we are trusting our life with that could have unveiled these things are part of it. For example, I have uh, a lady yesterday who was traumatized, beaten badly by police. And these are people who are law enforcement. These are people who are supposed to protect us. So the danger is that those who are supposed to protect us have failed us in all ramifications. Now let me give you an example. In the case of Uwala, I had the Inspector General of Police saying that they have to send their forensic team to Benin. That's ridiculous. That's preposterous. You can't do that. Every station is supposed to have their own lab in this 21st century. Yeah. Every station is supposed to have their own lab. We have to have the cement. We have to have Forensic experts who will go there and pick the DNA and unveil this mystery. But yet, the police are so backward in the 21st century. You see, it's a catch 22 here. Mm. The police had a problem and the government had a problem. Because the police are not properly equipped for their job. They're yeah. not ready. Yeah. Let's not fool her. Let's take PDP, APC aside for once and let us tell ourselves the truth. And the rights of citizens have been taken from them. Mm. So we don't practice democracy. In order for us to change the narratives, the right must be given back to us. We have to police the police. Now, how do you expect a police, a scientist going to, to a native doctor, 
and consult the oracle <laughs> to get the killers or the picture of the crime. I said it's going to the miracle pastors to tell their whole mother who are for us. Yeah. But whereas if you have the equipment, if you have the forensic, this is solved easily. Yeah. So that's my take on it. I think okay. the police have to be restructured. Mm. The police have to be trained. Mm. Yes, they are very few good police yeah. who love police. Yeah, they're police. passionate about they're their passionate job. About their yeah. job. But majority of the police are bad ex. Okay. So the, 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 the ones who love the job, mm. who came in there because they want to represent the nation, they should help us to flush out the bad ones in the police. All right, Dr. Omonigo. Yeah, w what are your perspectives? I mean, um, social vices, let's begin with rape, has always been there. But it looks like the lockdown, uh, would you say um, accentuated it as it were? Well, um, I'm not going to blame it on the lockdown alone. And before I start my submission, I would like to first of all wish all our fathers back home a happy Father's Day. Thank Yesterday you. was Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you. I hope you're not going to charge us for that somewhere along the line. You know, no, you, no, you no. wise women always have a way of getting the money back. <laughs> you know, uh, while celebrating fathers, I would like to take this question mm. from that perspective. Okay. Before blaming the government and before blaming the police, what is the role of the fathers in this whole thing? I feel personally that the way we were brought up when we were much younger is not the way most parents are bringing up their children today. The kind of discipline we received while growing up is not the kind of discipline we are giving our children now. Mm. So I feel that the surge in these social vices may or could be attributed to failure in parenthood especially in fatherhood, mm. with all due respect to all our fathers. Okay. If I may ask, how many fathers take time out to spend time with their families? Most fathers are running after money, trying to make the family very comfortable. Thank you for that. But that's not all that matters. We, the children need discipline at home, especially the male. Mm. I'm coming to the female. The children need discipline at home. You need to know the way they're growing up and know their attitude, know their character. There is a limit a woman can handle children. They, when we're growing up in those days, by the time we'll be misbehaving, you know, my mom usually threaten us that, look, I'm going to report to your daddy. And once she says that, all of us will just, you know, uh, be spot on, we'll try and put on good uh, attitude. Yeah. But now, when mommy says, I'm going to tell your father, the children will even say, where is daddy? By the time daddy would have arrived, the children would have slept. Yeah. So I think we should go back to families. Is the, the society is failing in family. The family has failed the society. Before you start blaming the police, before you start blaming the government, blame yourself. Check where we have failed at home. Having said that, now, I want to also talk about the, the point of peer pressure. Mm. When you are not at home, you don't know your children's friends. You don't know whom they relate with. You don't know what they watch. When we're talking about peer pressure, most times they connect through social media. And then we buy these exotic phones for them. We work, we want your children, we want our children we, to... We want the best for them. For them. Mm. My daughter uses an iPhone. And so we say, oh, I'm using an iPhone. So because of that, I don't check what my child is uh, watching. And then when you see them at home, they don't make noise. Your house is so quiet. You are happy that your children are not making noise. Check what they are on, on, uh, they are doing on their social media, on their phones. You find out that that is where they get most of these ideas from. Let me give you an example. On, on Facebook, for example, you see people, they just post pictures with exotic cars, you know, looking very good, spending money, maybe in parties, and then your child will be interested immediately. How did they get this money? The child doesn't want to know, but the child wants to be like his or her mate. I think that is where it's going from. And then from there, they will tell you, Daddy, I want to go and, and read with my friends. You just said, okay, you can go, without checking whether it is true or not. No. Forget the fact that you are from Christian homes. That one is uh, overemphasized. Yes, we are all Christians. Who are the perpetrators of this evil? Most of us, most of them are from Christian homes and Christian backgrounds. Now, when your child is going out, you don't censor where the, he or she is going to. And then they go out to meet their friends and they relate. They even take, to the extent that they take drugs or maybe they drug that child and everything. Yeah. When we're talking about the number of rape, 
be a rape being a you know 700 i just smiled why i smiled is it's the ones recorded that you know exactly there are so many rape that cases. are all reported yes all reported and then who are the perpetrators there are people from homes mm. there are people under you know uh, their parents they are even under the roof of their parents when they finish they go home you welcome them without checking out where your child is coming from so i think that the policing should start from the family mm. the policing should start from fathers the policing should start from mothers having said that i would like to also talk about the ladies you are being raped check are you sure you are not making yourself vulnerable to being raped I'm not saying that, uh, you know, all rape cases are because the girls... You Just know, indecently. Yeah. But you see, most times, our, our society has completely lost it. I'm very sorry to say we have completely lost it. We want to emulate the Western world. Do we have what the Western world has in, such, in, in the case of security? Yeah. If you go outside the country, most countries have CCTV cameras everywhere. Do we have it? If you don't have it, while waiting for government to provide that, you protect yourself by making yourself as much as possible not to be vulnerable to anybody to rape you. Okay. And how do you do that? Dress decently. Mm. Um, I, 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 people are seeing me, I'm, I'm, I'm well clothed. That, will not, that does not take away my beauty. Yeah. You know, yeah. dress decently. You mm. don't have to dress provocatively. Now, talking about lecturers trying to rape uh, students. Mm. Sir, with all due respect, do you know that students harass our male lecturers? <laughs> Female students, I'm telling you, what I'm trying to say, you know, you have these men who, are, who, who do not have self control. And but so, what I'm saying, you know that, have right? men in the society yeah. who do not have self control, do not contribute to their problems by up. provoking them mm. into raping them. Stop up presenting yourself as a sex yeah. object. And up men up also, away. when you see ladies like that, know that these are moving temptations. Run away from them. All right, let me proceed to the Tom Yeah, um, yeah, Peter Osagi, hello. Yeah, you wanted to say something yes. in, case, in terms of some of the yes. points that she raised. Yeah, she, she raised a very a lot of uh, silly points yeah. but again um, yes responsibility have to start from home I mm. agree with that on mm. that mm. but again uh, we have Muslims who dress with hijab that's yeah. what you call it yeah. they've been raped every day yeah. so it's the mindset of the mind it's not your dressing you can dress keep it you can wear jeans what you want to wear if a guy put a gun on your head and put his hand in your throat and said take it off you're going to take it off so I don't want to blame to blame the women for that because of the way they are dressing. Of course, the way you dress is how you're going to be addressed. Yeah. I agree with that. But it's not everybody that can dress in your own way. Because yeah. if you are saying this now, these um, pedophiles might think that it is the victim form. And it's not right to blame the victim. Mm -hmm. How you dress or how don't you dress, it doesn't matter. My daughter can dress uh, with a, uh, a mini skirt. That doesn't give you the audacity to rape her. But because I'm going to take action on my own, <laughs> whatever happens, right? So that's apart. And also, I want to agree with that that we are apart from our family. But you know the terrain that we live, there's poverty. The guy has to go out and hustle and work. So the responsibility sometimes again also fall on the women. And also, too, you have two parents at home who are working to get to income home mm -hmm. because most people go to private schools. Yeah. I agree in most of the things they say, but again, you cannot take the fact away that Nigeria has not grown to that extent that we cannot manage the situation. I have my phone here with me, and I can check everything that happened in my house at Ubo. I can check my house in Lagos. I can check my house in America. Just with ordinary phone is here. So if the government has so much money that they can waste on politicians, why can't we pr put that money in those areas mm. instead of blaming the victim? Yeah. I think we should look at that holistically yeah. because the police are coupled by this. And you will agree with me that the police are not trained. You see, there are people who have the passion to be a police, but there are those who just thought that when they wear black and black, they can go out to the street, harass women, and collect a gunja. Yeah. And that's how we have to rethink this. So we must give the responsibility to government. Don't forget that when we are children, Papa and Mama, they are our teachers. But when we pass that stage, we go to university, lecturer become our teacher. When we leave university, government become our teacher. So government are responsible for this. In so many ways, I cannot stop talking about the police, brutality, and in, in, in decency, what they do to our people. If you go to the GRE, for example, now, they stop cars, 
They tell the men and women to come down. They put their hand even in a woman's breast to say they are looking for drugs. First of all, do you have a search warrant? That's why I said power must come to the people. Yeah. And second of all, what gives you the audacity to tell somebody you look like a Yahoo boy or you look like a prostitute? That's an abuse of power. Let us not try to, I'm not saying you are defending government, yeah, yeah. but let us not try to defend it because if we do that, we're still going to remain where we are. Absolutely. I'm not finished on that. Yeah. How many police do we have? If you look at the United Nations statistics, we are far behind what we have to police us in the street. But you have a politician that will have a battalion of police protecting him and his family. You have pastors have a battalion of police protecting him and his family. So these things have to look into. I am tired of it shoving it. If you go out there, you see a lot of billboard I'm doing now. I'm doing billboard all about that system because I'm passionate. I'm patriotic enough to make sure that I, I, I come to my quarter to the system to make sure that we condemn. And again, when you rape a girl, they go to the station, the police settle the matter out of, out of, out of station. Mm. Why would the police who have a daughter, why would the police who have a wife settle with, with, with somebody who just raped a daughter? It bleeds my heart. Okay. okay. All right, yeah, no. Yes. Um, looking at, because of the limitation of time, or looking at um, what can be done to address this issue. Some of them we've highlighted. Yes. Yeah, I'd like you to take okay, off from that point. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Mm. You see, um, let's not be too sentimental about this issue. Mm. The truth about it is that it's getting out of hand. And so, for us to be, to be objective about it, we have to calm down, take away all emotions, and see the best possible ways to curtail this problem in the society mm. that is growing by the day. Yeah. You know, what I try to do is I try as much as possible to be very objective. I'm not saying that the government does not have a part to play. Yeah. But you see, we have been in Nigeria, you and I have been in Nigeria for a long time and we know what is going on in the system. We keep on talking and talking and it's like our government is not listening. Now, while we are waiting for government to listen to us, we also have to carve out a way to protect ourselves and protect our children. Now, this is how I see it, that if I tell my children that stay away from evil, and I tell my children the consequences of some of these evil acts, I think it will also go a long way. So I call on parents today. Parents should sit their, their children down. While we're growing up, our parents will force us uh, to sit down. Nine o'clock NTA news in those days was very compulsory in my house. Mm. And after that, we will analyze. We will analyze, and after the analysis, everybody will have our evening devotion, and we go to sleep. How many of us do such now? Yeah. I'm not saying that everybody should be from a Christian home. Yeah. But at least, have a time with your family. Like he said, people, parents are going out looking for money. You are looking for money. Who are you going to spend that money on mm. if the children end up being in the prison yeah so what i'm trying to say is that while looking for money make out time for family i'm a very busy woman i'm a career woman i'm a very busy woman in a place of work but i make sure that i must spend two hours with my children after work no matter how tired i am and when i mean two hours i mean i dig into what they have done in the day sometimes when they are asleep i check their phones now let me tell you for parents who are privileged for parents who are privileged to give their children um, you know, some of these exotic phones and their uh, iPads, you could link up whatever they are doing to your phone. You see, that, let me just give us a secret, parents. Um, my children will link up their iPads to our phones. We put their, their email addresses on our phones and put our email addresses on their iPads. So whatever they are doing, we get to know. They don't know that we, that they have to, we have, they, we have such devices. Mm. They've been trying to find out how mommy and daddy... Just to know some of the things they do. Yes. Yes. Sometimes when they go to some sites, my husband will just call me, check your phone, call your daughter, or check your phone, call your son. And that's what we do. And then in the evenings, we come together and we tell them that this is very, very important. Mm. Having said that, I also want to beg parents that you should be able to know the whereabouts of your children and also know the kind of friends they, they go can. out with. Mm. When we were younger, they used to say, show me your friend and I'll I will tell you who you are. Mm. And then each time we are going, and my father will always tell us, say, remember the child of whom you are. Mm. Do we still tell our parents such now, our children such? Most times when you wake up in the morning, your children are still in bed, you rush out, and by the time you are back in the evening, either they are on their phones or they are asleep. Mm. So we should, parents should go back, families should go back to the grassroots and then 
curtail this. Then lastly, yeah, lastly, yeah, so yeah, I know that time yeah, is passed. Yeah. Coming to government, government has failed. Yeah. And we hope we are hoping for better a better governance in Nigeria. Uh, government is putting pressure also on us by the failed economic system. You know, at the time you talked about this lockdown being attributed to the uh, surge in crime yeah. in the society. Yeah. I wouldn't negate that, although I know I've not proven it as a fact yeah. and I've not really given it a thought. thought. But let me tell you, during this lockdown, other countries are locking down. And then you want us to lock down. You did not provide what other countries are providing. For their citizens. Yeah, for their citizens. You don't provide it. And then you say they should stay indoors. Stay indoors, they don't have food. Stay indoors, they don't have uh, uh, um, security. Because we heard about the one million boys going to rob people in Lagos yeah, yeah. and everything. All right, let, let, me, let me pursue that. Uh, Patrick Osagi, what are your thoughts? I mean, what we need to do to, term, to tame this scourge? Because... Uh, up until the time the Wyla story came out, um, perhaps it wasn't really something that was given uh, a thought. And then arrests were made. I, rec I recall there's a story in uh, Kano State where a young guy uh, who was accused or alleged to have raped up to 40 people. There's also another story in Port Harcourt. Uh, another guy was alleged to have raped up to about 25 uh, women. I mean, the story just kept on coming out. So it's like, uh, unfortunately, the negativity of uh, Wallace's death has not. The one you are yeah, hearing, and yeah. I'm cut it short. <laughs> uh, the brutal one, mm. okay? There's rape in our house every day. Mm. Because, like I said before, a woman has a right to say no. Okay. When you insist when she said no it's raped okay even to a husband and wife okay. you have a right to tell your, your husband no mm. you are tired i cannot so a rape is a rape again why i agree with most things doc said right but it's one thing that she said that i want to a little bit differ from what she said we shouldn't put emotion let me tell you something we passed the emotion you cannot change anything if you're not angry are you happy with the situation of this country if Nigeria was an organized uh, society. society. Yeah, yeah. People have welfare. You have welfare that will take care of your children for you. But a man cannot tempt them with money. Men cannot tempt them with money. I am a Canadian. I have dual citizenship. And I'll tell you, as I'm in Nigeria with this palliative measure, I've gotten $12,000 from Canada free to me to assist myself so I don't commit crime. I understand what you're saying. But we are not living our time again. Yeah. The life is evolving. Yeah. Your time is different now. We didn't have technology mm. back in, in the our days. Time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the time is different. I think government need to help us. We need to elect people. We should stop selling our votes. I I, I had issue recently with this killing and with this sex for greed with so many things. And I wrote about five. Uh, Members that represent our interest that we felt that we vote for. It was only Senator Orogide that replied me back. In a decent society, when you have a show issue, you go to meet the member that represents you. You cry to him. Yeah. You cry to him. Over here, we have champions fighting on Facebook over Baseki, Izayamo, Oshomole, and all that. And even in this election now, if we are lucky, you get about 400,000 that will bring out our governorship. But you know our population, yeah. and you know how many people who are online yeah. attacking each other, fighting each other over yeah. nothing. Yeah. We should encourage government to educate us. We should put more money in orientation. Mm. We should let the girls know that you have the right to say no, and that makes you let them know that mm. whenever anybody touch you, you must say mm. something. Mm. And with the public, you also support them, whether they were naked in the pool or they were walking naked you have no right they have strip clubs in america mm. where you can watch you can touch if you touch again in the strip club you go to jail mm. Mm. I'll, I'll give you right. okay yeah, now no. um mm. quickly you know you mentioned series of people rapists who have been apprehended yes. now the question is what has happened to those uh -huh. people I th and that's where I come to his point. Uh -huh. I'm not saying that when I talk about be not being too emotional, when you get too emotional, you it blocks your emotion, will block you from getting the real thing. Okay. You don't be pursuing the shadow and leaving the object. Okay. Now, these people that have been apprehended, what has been done to them? Before you know it, they will be released and they will be back to the society. They will do worse things. We also have a case where a man, a hate man, 
raped a pregnant woman yes. because uh, the husband killed one of his cows. You know, and what my point is this: if the government can come out with and a the good sanction, sorry, once the government can come out with a good sanction, yeah. you know, against rapists, I think, and they and they do it. What, what, what is your people? recommendation? Because that became a very difficult yes. issue recently yes. online. <laughs> so we're talking about castrating. Yes, there was, a, there was actually a house member, you know, who said, who proposed that. These people should be castrated. Mm. Why not? Mm. Castration is even one of the least okay. uh, punishment you could give to such people. To, to a rapist. Yeah, to a rapist. I support the because, no, no, I'm telling you. What's on this? You know, like, in fact, when, the, because when they said no, when they were all, I just said, now look at them. They are sympathizing with a, a demon. Let me use the word yeah. a demon. They yeah. are super, sympathizing. Somebody who has raised somebody 40 times, yeah. who has raised 40 different women, yeah. 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 should, cast, should be castrated. Yeah. And not only that, if you cannot be castrated, you know, you can do something. Uh, it, the, in Indonesia, for example, if you are caught raping, you will be killed. They do it. And because of that, people are very, very scared. Of course, you know, in the United States as well, don't make a rape or a rape. Uh, 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 now, let me know that if government officials are not involved in this rape issue, castrate people will not be talking to him. And then, women also, not only women in society, who are military women, women in politics, as I know, I've seen already in book, what are they doing? It may be called tomorrow. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Sela Omigo and Peter Patrick Osige. This is Thomas' program. We have more time, probably, I'd love to talk more. We're sure that we have some time to embellish this conversation again, because it's an ongoing issue, and social justice has been over the years. They still be there, it is tomorrow. But what we're concerned about is what we need to do in terms of matching words, action to bring that the society out there, the society will be a better place for to live because you can't really tell who is going to be the next victim or whose child will be the next victim. It's still TMI Monday. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll look at Edu 2020. Don't go away. <laughs>